Chapter 6 Overcoming Delusion Sutra 46 Kastarati Kastarati Mayam Yaha Sangam Tyajati Yo Mahanu Bhavam Sevate Nirmamo Bhavati Who overcomes delusion? He who gives up all attachment, he who serves great souls, and he who gives up the idea of egotism. Here, delusion refers to the ignorance that keeps an aspirant distant from reality. The Lord himself confirms in the Bhagavad Gita 7.25 I do not reveal myself to everyone, but keep myself veiled by my yogmaya. Thus, those bereft of wisdom cannot recognize me as the eternal Lord. Yogmaya is a goddess who creates various kinds of positive confusion in the world or in the Lord's abode for various purposes in the course of the Lord's divine play. The first part of the aphorism states, Who overcomes delusion? He who gives up all attachment. Therefore, Sage Narad states some qualities that the aspirant needs to acquire in order to remove this delusion. These qualities have been discussed previously, but in this aphorism, Sage Narad mentions them to strengthen his point. One who wants to swim across a river must use one's arms and legs constantly against the water pressure to push through the water. A beginner can eventually cross a river by performing this repetitive action, but the moment he stops swimming, he will surely drown. Likewise, he who has a desire to cross the river of delusion has to persistently contend against his egoism and see through worldly attachments which make the water murky. One who is not resilient will surely sink into its bottomless depth. Swimming across a river for a beginner may feel tiring and he may need regular breaks to rest his limbs. Similarly, Constantly swimming in the river of ignorance can exhaust an aspirant and he may take a step back and find himself in the beneficial position of contemplation, giving him an opportunity to restore his energy and fight back. For example, the aspirant may abandon his devotional practice for some time. Absolute renunciation from attachments cannot help a devotee initially he must allow time for his spiritual evolution. Thus, in the second part of the aphorism, Narad advises one to take the necessary intervals by serving great souls. However, serving does not necessarily imply living in the company of saints or rendering physical service to them. Although in one's devotional practice, such service is essential and advisable when one is fortunate enough to be in this position. It is most important to follow the teachings of a spiritual master. If an aspirant acts according to his own instructions by not following the teachings and regulates his life according to his limited understanding, his service will be regarded as flawed by the scriptures. A devotee who enjoys the privilege of true service to the great souls, crosses a river of delusion effortlessly. The grace of great souls comes and ferries him across. Therefore, Narada advises the aspirant to take to the service of these elevated beings. The Srimad Bhagavatam 11.26.32 states, My peaceful, saintly devotees are the only lifeboat for those tossed by waves of the terrible ocean of material life. Lochandas Thakur, one of the earliest biographers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, wrote the following song. Ke jabi, ke jabi bhai, bhava shindu par, dhanya kali jogir Chaitanya avatar, amar gorange ghate adan khaya boy, Jara Andha Atur Avadi Parhoi Hari Name No Kahani 
श्री गुरु कंडारी संकीर्तन खे रोयाल दुबाहू पसारी सब जीव होयला पार प्रेमे वटासे पड़िया रहिला लोचन अपना डोसे ओ ब्रदर्स हु विल गो हु विल गो क्रॉस द ओशन ऑफ मिजरी इन दिस ब्लेसेड कलयुग लॉर्ड चैतन्य हैज कम एट माय गोरंग्स घाट अ बोट इज वेटिंग द इग्नोरेंट ब्लाइंड एंड डिस्ट्रेस्ड all shall be ferried across that boat is the holy name of krishna shri guru is the captain the sankirtan party rows it with their upraised arms as oars thus all souls were taken across propelled by the wind of sacred love only i the poet lochan was left behind on account of all my faults Gorang is one of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's names. A ghat is a wide flight of steps leading to Indian river bank. And sankirtan is a collective singing of the Lord's names. One's relationship with the world can become an obstacle in one's service to great souls. Possessive feelings for worldly objects prevent the aspirants from serving the saints. Hence Narad gives light to further knowledge in the third part of the aphorism who gives up the idea of egotism once an aspirant removes his ego he receives a necessary devotional mood and association as an example when a man checks into a hotel room he does not feel that the room is his home when a person eats at a restaurant he does not feel that it is his kitchen and dining room with the same mood one should take this earth as a hotel and use its resources but one must eliminate the feeling of ownership towards them which is a root of possessiveness without this practice the desire to possess more will awaken binding one into a never-ending cycle of chasing after those wants